appreciate is that he's able to tackle the big, robust, timeless myths that we get from stories like Henry V, or Frankenstein, or Thor. <laughs> uh, but perhaps the most indelible myth that I think any of us can have comes from our own story. And that's something that you will see tonight. Uh, this is a story that has some of the, the large arc of a mythic story, but it's also a very intimate, personal story set uh, during the time when uh, Kenneth Branagh himself was growing up in Northern Ireland, in Belfast. This is not directly his story, but it's certainly inspired uh, by what he and his family experienced at the time. Uh, and it also has a beautiful um, reminiscence of what going to the movies used to be like back in the day as well. It's a film that's shot in this lustrous black and white. Uh, it has uh, those you know, beautiful performances. It has some legends in it as well, including Dame Judi Dench and Kieran Hines. Uh, it has uh, the amazing uh, uh, actors Jamie Dornan and Katrina Bauf. <laughs> And uh, a real discovery in uh, Jude Hill as well, who's just remarkable in the film. And then also, some of that you might not know, but who's just wonderful as well, is uh, Jerry Horn uh, in the film as well. And uh, Kenneth Branagh, having written the script and directing it, uh, brings all of this together to tell a story that takes us back to a time. Some of you may know this time and place, for some of you it will be new, but I think all of you will be inspired by the story he tells. He's come to introduce the film to you this evening. Please join me in welcoming the director of Belfast, Sir Kenneth Bryant. but to see a large group of people gathered to watch a motion picture is pretty bloody exciting. So thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, thank you very much, all of you, uh, for being here. After all uh, that we have all been through, uh, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to be in your company. I first came to this great city over 30 years ago to play uh, on the stages of your theatres. Uh, our Canadian audiences were fantastic. Boy, do you know your Shakespeare. Um, a year later, I had my first experience of this film festival. Canadian audiences were fantastic. Boy, do you know your movies. Um, and it's a town which, uh, in my experience, is throbbing with creativity, vitality, and generosity. And I love it, and I'm honored to be back. And as my mother will insist, I say, Thank you very much for having us. Um, thank you also, thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. I want to thank Focus Features for making our presence here possible. They've been absolutely the greatest of partners in, in, in making the journey of this film together and making it better. They've just been brilliant uh, to bring it to you here and I thank them very much indeed. We're also very fortunate in creating the film to work with some of Ireland's finest film artists and a couple of them are indeed with me here today and I'm delighted to say and it is a real pleasure to introduce first a wonderful actor and a really terrific man who you will know as the amazing Mr. Jamie Dornan. Jamie's contribution to the film, as you will see, is immense, and I thank him for it. And playing the role of Mackie in the film, another wonderful actor uh, who stood with me on those Toronto stages all those years ago, all those decades ago, and who's been a uh, cherished colleague across many, many projects. He is the brilliant Mr. Gerard Horan. Thank you. I want to salute our producers who are here in the auditorium tonight. They are Tamar Thomas, Laura Berry, and Becca Kovacic. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Stand up, stand up, ladies, if you're there, because this film would not have been made without them. They have my profound thanks, and I really appreciate your appreciation of them. Few shout outs, if you don't mind. And one to my agent, Robert Newman, for always believing. Thank you, Robert. And, um, 
And also, forgive me, but I know you'll want to hear this, because aside from all of you fantastic people, we have a, a several great filmmakers in the audience tonight, which we're pretty overexcited about. So we have the great Philip Noyce in the house tonight. We also have, thank you, Philip. We have two great Canadian filmmakers, the amazing Adam Egoyan is here tonight. And, uh, and the brilliant Patricia Rosamond as well. Uh, two, two great Canadian artists who are friends and fellow uh, artists who take the trouble to be here tonight. They are the great director Donna Fjord and the great actor Colin Fjord. So I salute you all so to the film. Uh, I grew up in a place uh, where it seemed to have rained a lot, uh, but there was plenty of sunshine in the hearts of the people. Uh, we laughed a lot about daft things. Um, please feel free to laugh tonight if you are so moved. Uh, and we held each other when we cried about serious things. And generally, as a community, we were there for each other, uh, for everyone. Uh, and then, as they say, things changed. So what you're about to see is the story of something that happened to me when uh, I was nine years old and which changed my life forever. It also affected many, many others in profound ways that reverberate to this day. I've been waiting and wanting to tell this story for 50 years and over that time I have repeatedly heard the beautiful cacophonous noise of this city in my head. At the beginning of the lockdown, for reasons which will probably become clear when you see the film, I knew that finally attention must be paid. So after 50 years I listened and I wrote down what I heard. These events take place in a great northern city on the island of Ireland a long time ago in a place called Belfast. Thank you.